it's David and Brian from VM Blog, and we're here in San Diego. And we're covering the KubeCon uh, Cloud Native 2019 conference, and here's some of the highlights from the show. at KubeCon 2019 in San Diego, um, and we're visiting with Solo.io. Can you tell me a little bit more about the company and what you're showing here at KubeCon? Sure. So I started Solo two years ago, and we focus on actually helping customers migrate from monolithic to microservices. So when people are actually migrating from monolithic to, app, to microservices, they're very focused on about how it is to take the monolithic code and break it to microservices. But actually, this is really the easy part. The complex problem is how do you actually manage after the microservices in a distributed application? So, if you think about it now, simple stuff like how to write from microservice one to microservice two that you didn't need to at all take care of when there was the monolithic application now becoming a really big problem. So, how do you route them? How do you make sure that you're writing in a secure way? How do you make sure that you actually see what's going on in your cluster? That's a big problem that customers will have issues with. So we started by actually helping them first on the edge, basically managing those microservices, made sure that we're actually forcing security, and we created what, in my opinion, the best API gateway that exists in the market. Now, this will work really, really fantastic. So it's the glue. The thing is that that will work very, very fantastic in the edge, so when people are coming to the cluster, but you still need it to fix this problem when they communicate between two microservices. And that's where Service Mesh can help them. So we actually build Glue on top of Envoy, because Envoy is the building block of actually every, micro, every uh, Service Mesh solution. Um, and that will be the stepping stone for them to start with that. That's a way simpler solution that will give them a lot of benefit and will help them then adopt service mesh in production. Uh, so that's the first product that we have, it's called Glue. Um, the second thing is that once they're actually adopting Glue, as I said, we didn't solve the problem of what's called east-west traffic. For that, what we did, instead of actually building a service mesh, which is clear that everybody will do, what we try to figure out is how you can help adopt service mesh, how we can actually help them to solve the next problem once service mesh actually will be something that they can use in production. And what we came with is that the problem will be that they will have more than one instance of it. So either they're going to run, they're going to run more than one cluster, therefore they will have more than one instance. It maybe could be the same type of instance, like STO, for instance, for two of the, of, the, of, of the cluster, but they potentially can even want to go to something like AWS Cloud, and then they most likely should use the technology that's offered there, build in and integrate with everything, like AppMesh. So now the question is, how do you manage them? How do you make sure that they all come to communicate the same language? How do you make sure that you're grouping them and treat them as one? Because that is your, um, your environment. That's where we came with a product called Service Mesh Shop. So, so, okay. so you kind of touched on you know, how you guys uh, work together with Kubernetes, but how do you fit into the ecosystem? You know, what problems do you solve there? Yes. So, Kubernetes is something that we are natively believing in, and therefore every, every of our product is actually built in natively to, of Kubernetes. So as I said, when people are moving to microservices, they will need a schedule, that will be Kubernetes, right? But as I said, Kubernetes is not going to solve them all the problem out of the box. So all our product, if it's Glue as an ingress, or if it's the service mesh hub as to actually, in the service mesh ecosystem, it's going to actually enhance or add, a, the, the functionality of uh, Kubernetes and help them to actually solve those specifically problems. We are natively running on it. We are using SCRDs, which is custom resource um, a definition to actually store our state. So it's natively feel like it's an extension to Kubernetes. Great. And I understand you recently had a uh, announcement. Can you tell me a little bit about what that announcement was about? Yes. So so we are so. We, we, we actually open source Glue a year and a half ago, and basically it was immediately pretty hit, but right now, after a year and a half running it in production, which big, huge organization, we kind of like felt very comfortable 
to announce 1.0 and, and, and GA. So basically, Glue right now is a production ready, the, the API are very solid, but we also enhance it with a lot of functionality that our customer actually demanded. Like we created a web application firewall support for Envoy we, and Glue. We, we, we do a data loss prevention, LDAP integration, a lot of security features that are actually helping Glue be very mature and be able to run on production. Uh, the scale is another thing. We work very, very strong about the scale. Specifically when you think about it, basically what Glue is doing and Service Mesh is doing is taking over your network. If it's taking over your network, you know, that's a lot of power, right? right. But with great power comes great responsibility. We need to make sure that actually it's solid and that's what Glue is. So that's where we are right now. So, uh, so that's it, the Glue, the Glue 1.0. The other thing that we announced last week um, is that besides winning the, the cool vendor for Gardner and a lot of other analyst support, what we announced is with more, more for Glue as well as service, mesh, service meshes, one of the problems that exists is, as I said, that we're just owning the network. And that means that the user configuration could be very error prone and it's very dangerous. Because if someone defining it in a bad way, just took all the network down. So what we basically announced is, is the ability to write operators specifically for service mesh um, in a very easy way. An operator is basically the ability to actually create an, an adaptive mesh. It's the ability from the mesh change the configuration automatically based on the environment variable. So like metrics and others. Great. And you know we could probably keep going on and on, but is there something maybe we could take a look at? Do you have a demo or something? Sure, let me show you. So what are we going to take a look at? What's the demos that you're going to show us? Yeah, so I'm going to show you first a demo of the latest Glue release. We just released our 1.0, and I'm going to walk through how you might migrate from a monolith to microservices in Glue. And then second, I'm going to take a look at some of the new features that we've just released in Service Mesh Hub. Oh, great. So this is Glue. Here I've modeled a monolithic application, the Pet Clinic application, which is a standard spring boot demo. And you can see there's you know, just a couple pages here, including one broken page. And the first thing that I'm going to do is create a new route to replace some information on the vet's page. And if I just, before doing this, look real quick, I'll see there's only two columns and I want to add a third column. This is you know, an example of how you might want to extend your monolith. So I just create a route to that upstream. Glue automatically picked up that service that had been deployed and automatically kind of updated the virtual service so it should route to it. And now we can see immediately this application loads with the new column. And we can actually do the same thing to route to individual functions such as uh, in AWS Lambda. So I could create another route. I've been using it really well. And I want to here now uh, fix our broken form that was doing the contact page. Yeah. And now you can see it's working. So what happened there is I set up a route, I selected a Lambda, uh, and I just added it under the slash contact on this virtual service, and immediately our application was updated. And so you can see in this way, we can very quickly iterate and set up applications and help migrate uh, from monolith to microservices. Sure. So this demo basically is going to consist of uh, taking advantage of the new features to configure your mesh and service mesh hub, and then also show how you can connect different clusters and even different mesh implementations and take advantage of those same features. Uh, oh. Sorry, I need to do one thing. I'm deleting a... I got a little ahead of myself in setting up this demo. So let me just delete this. So right now I've deployed this on a GKE cluster, uh, and I already have Istio installed. And you can see, here's the mesh. Blue's automatically discovered Istio. It discovered all the services that were injected, uh, and it knows that we're managing this namespace. And the first thing I want to do is enable RBAC to ensure that services aren't just communicating with MTLS, uh, but we've, we're explicitly granting access. And so once I toggle that on, if we go into the book info application, we can see that none of the um, sections load anymore, and we actually need to grant access. So I'll go in. So first I'll create a route group. This is kind of following the SMI, like the standard service mesh API methodology. 
um, and I'll add a route that represents basically all of the paths uh, between uh, between services in this book and application. And now I'm going to use that and grant access to individual services. So I'm going to first grant access here to the review service uh, for the product page service account. And now I'm going to do the same thing for details. So the product page service account can now access uh, details as well. And now we should see the whole product page will load. And this took effect, you know, basically immediately. So now, you know, a little flicker there, but now we've basically steadily been able to load. Uh, so now we're going to, uh, we can also do traffic shifting. You could do that on the local mesh, but I'm going to shift gears and show how we can do this stuff, uh, not just on a single mesh implementation, but across different clusters. So let me first um, go grab. So I'm basically grabbing the credentials for a Kubernetes cluster, and I'm going to register it here. Um, so this is a cluster I set up with EKS. And it actually doesn't have Istio installed. It has Linkerd. And there's a new implementation of the service that I want to roll out to this application. So here, we've immediately discovered Linkerd running on the other cluster. And now we can actually do routing. So let's set up a route group here. So Fluke actually has an API called a proxy. So now there's a group, and we can start to actually configure routing. So I'm going to create a mesh bridge. Not a lot, no. If you, if you unwrap the, uh, the proxy object, it's actually mirrored. So that product page can talk to the detail service on the remote cluster. And you can see we bridge, now we bridge Istio and Linkerd, and they're talking with MTLS, but they're, we're actually, we've, we've gotten the network figured out so we can extend this application over there. And so now let me divert some of the traffic to, from, uh, to the detail service, or that's currently going to details, to an implementation of the detail service on the other cluster. So here I can find it in a list of possible destinations. I can start to configure uh, some of the traffic to go there. And if I reload, I can start to see that half of my traffic, half the requests, are actually being populated from this new implementation of the service running on a different cluster with a different service mesh. And so with that, you know, we basically leverage SMI and leverage uh, the common APIs to build a very powerful tool that handles all the configuration of your mesh across clusters and across meshes. And uh, where can our viewers go if they want to find out more information about Solo and some of the products that you just demoed for us? Sure. So I would first recommend go to our website, solo.io. We just rolled out a new version of the site. It looks awesome. And there's a ton of information about both Service Mesh Hub and Glue. Uh, as well as information about our upcoming plans. So I'd start there, then you can dive into the docs and dive into the Slack channel. We're really active there. We've got a huge community around our products and we'd love uh, to grow that community. Great. Well, thanks for taking the time to speak with VM Blog. Thank you.